Hi guys, I'm Corey from Seaboard Marine and today we're going to talk about crankcase ventilation systems and more specifically the environment system from Seaboard Marine. Blow-by is a condition where the combustion gases that are taking place above the piston is somehow able to bypass the pistons around the rings and enter into the crankcase cavity. Now every engine that's out there in the marine world is going to have some amount of blow-by. Okay, so engines like this one that are brand new, uh, you would expect after installation, running your first T-trial, you're going to have a very minimum amount of blow-by. On the flip side of that, there could be engines out there that have between 5, 10, 15, upwards of, let's say, 20, 25,000 hours on these engines, and over time, blow-by is going to be something that you're going to have to mitigate and deal with. A crank case ventilation system is going to allow us to do a lot of things. Number one, it's going to give us a clean engine room. Engines that don't properly mitigate combustion gases are going to end up being very sooty and oily, and you're not going to have a very good looking engine room. Typically, you'll see the air filters, instead of being a nice clean white or red, uh, you're going to end up with filters that are starting to crunch in covered and caked with soot and oil and all the fumes and gases that are escaping from the engine. Also, you're going to see a lot of this film and soot around areas of the engine room, specifically even areas on the engine that are typically much cooler than other areas around the engine room. Things, uh, areas like the alternator, areas like the cool side of the aftercooler tend to grab and condense these gases and oils. Okay, so let's talk about some common problems specific to Cummins Marine engines and engines in general, but right now we're going to focus mainly on Cummins. So one of the things we want to look at is the orientation and configuration of the engine. Um, if you look on this particular engine, this is, a, this is your standard 6BTA 5.9 uh, 370 diamond. You'll notice on the, on the tappet cover here is our crankcase vent. Now from the factory, this crankcase is vented, as you can see from this, this tube here, right into your engine room. So all of those nasty fumes and gases uh, that are being emitted by the engine are basically going into the bilge and floating around the engine room. That's something that we really don't want to happen. If you notice the oil pan on this engine is very uniform and very shallow. And being the fact that it's in a boat, you would expect in this particular configuration with a transmission behind it and a, and a prop shaft behind that, that the engine is always, when underway, is going to run bow high. Okay. When this engine runs bow high, you're going to end up at the front of the engine at some sort of elevated angle. That elevated angle is going to cause your oil level in the engine relative to, let's say, Mother Earth, to collect more on the aft portion of the engine. Okay? The reason this is a problem is because if the engine's hiked up at an angle, this particular section of oil, especially if the oil is overfilled or at the high mark, the, as the rods of the pistons start to dip down, they're going to be in more contact with that oil and they're going to stir that oil and whip it up. Another reason that's a problem is because our crankcase vent happens to be right above this area on the aft section of this engine. The fact that it's on that area is, is not a good thing because the agitated oil has much more of a tendency to want to come out of that section of the engine. That's why it's very important for the environment that we place the vent of the engine on the front of the engine, far, far away from this turbulent section of the engine here. Another component that we'd like to talk about that has been problematic in the past is the orientation of the crankcase vent on the Cummins B-Series engines. If you notice that the vent comes in a downward configuration and points down towards Mother Earth, with certain Walker air separator systems is the link between the vent of the engine drooping down, creating a low spot, and going to the coalescing filter of the walker system in conjunction with the check valve of the oil drain that goes back into the engine, it creates a sink trap in this hose. Uh, as a boat operator runs his boat for a long period of time and allows a lot of that oil and, and condensation to collect in that hose, we've seen in the past where when the boat operator goes to rerun the engine up, the oil that's collected in that hose in between the air filter and the vent itself tends to get gobbled up 
and thrown into the air filter. The oil tends to not only gunk up the coalescing filter of the Walker Aircept, but that oil tends to travel down through the turbo and the air inlet, through the air tube, and ends up into the inlet side of the aftercooler core. All kinds of uh, downstream byproduct effects are going to happen. You're going to lose the ability to make boost. You're going to start blowing black smoke. You're going to also think that your turbo is leaking oil in places where it's not leaking oil. There's no reason you should have to replace the turbo in aftercooler, put everything back on, and then experience the same issues because you're not understanding that the crankcase vent and the air filter system is really the root cause of, of those particular problems. Other common problems of overcomplicated crankcase ventilation systems is that they use a lot of different components. And a lot of different components such as valves, springs, check valves, drain lines, tend to overcomplicate the system. Now when the system is put in place initially, the system tends to work very well. The engineering behind it is good. However, when one of those components begins to work improperly or fail, it creates a lot of downstream issues uh, for that system that can be a real pain in the butt. Now the two major types of crankcase ventilation systems are a very simple one. This particular engine happens to come from the factory with an open type configuration. In other words, the vent is venting direct to the atmosphere. Any sort of byproduct from the combustion gases is going to come through this tube and end up in your engine room. The second type of crankcase ventilation system is a closed type. That's where we're going to take these gases from the engine, we're going to bring them out of the engine, and then we're going to recirculate the gases through the air filter and into the turbo back into the engine. What the closed loop system is going to do by taking a low spot and collecting it into a bottle is it's going to remove a lot of those gross, nasty acids and other byproducts that we don't want to have drained back into the engine oil pan. Okay, today we're going to show you uh, the basic steps of installing the standard EnviroVent system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to manage your remote oil filter. Not every engine is going to have a remote oil filter, but if you do, you're going to need to somehow figure out how to move this and push it forward to accommodate the timing cover vent. The oil line that comes in it sits about an inch in front of the coolant expansion tank. We're going to push this out with this Seaboard Marine custom CNC bracket. We're going to remove the filter head from the existing factory bracket. The next step of the process is to remove the factory bracket from the head. We're going to apply a liberal amount of grease to the area that has not been painted. Metal lube and we're going to lube up the bolts as well. The last step in our process is to attach the remote oil filter head. Now with our new SMX remote uh, extension installed, you'll notice that as opposed to an inch in front, that we're now three and a half inches in front of the factory expansion tank. So we'll need to make sure that we have this three and a half inches available to us in the front of the engine when installing the extension bracket. The first component of our installation for the crankcase ventilation system is going to be our timing cover breather. Now this element of the system is very important because with this breather element, we're going to be able to throttle the amount of suction that the engine is able to produce in order to contain the blow-by gases. Now engines that have a tremendous amount of blow-by are going to experience uh, an issue of blow-by actually escaping from the breather if the blow-by is, is, is high. The best way to mitigate this is to apply the breather all the way down the tube and prevent that blow-by from exiting the filter and to be reconsumed by the engine. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is install the timing cover breather. We've removed our cap. We've also installed the gasket inside of the timing cover component. 
Okay. This gasket is going to want to stop at about 11 o'clock here. It's going to take a little bit of extra effort and, and elbow grease to get this to clock around. We want about a 2 o'clock orientation. <clears throat> we can install our, our tube and, and our breather. We want our hose barb oriented in a general direction that kind of runs down to the base of the after cooler. Now, in the environment kit, we're gonna have a lot of components in the bag here. Let's go ahead and go through some of the components that make up the timing cover configuration kit for a 6BTA. We have our chafe guard. Lots of handy dandy zip ties. What we call the puke bottle. Our factory vent plug, handy dandy rector seal for sealing all of our connections, and the properly sized hose clamps. The next element of our installation is to install the hose to the 90 degree hose barb from the breather. We want to make sure to use a lot of the rector seal that was included in the kit. This helps to seal all of our connections. We we'll want to make sure to orient the hose running down the engine, creating a, a low spot right below or next to the existing factory hose. Next is the installation of our puke bottle at the lowest point of our configuration. In this particular case, we're going to install this underneath the after cooler. And we'll fasten the hose with our nut driver. Next, we'll install the remainder of our hose to the inlet of the SMB air filter. How's that? That was great. Okay. I'm going to cut this right here. The last component of, of our assembly is going to be connecting the air filter to the puke bottle hose and the hose that runs from the breather. Now in a perfect world I wouldn't have cut this piece so short and this piece so long. As long as the puke bottle is the lowest point of our system, that's what matters most. Next, we're going to install our chafe guard onto the hose that's going to attach to the raw water outlet elbow. Attach our hose to the other cool side of the raw water circuit just to keep it from interfering with anything else. And now we end up with a nice clean setup with our puke bottle being the lowest point in the system. Now that we removed the factory crankcase ventilation kit, which is just a tube that goes into your engine room, the last step in this sequence uh, is to plug the vent. We want to make sure the engine is no longer venting from the factory tappet cover tube and is now forced to vent from our recently installed timing cover breather on the front of the engine. There's two caps, so we're going to use both caps here. That just makes for a nice snug fit. We also want to make sure that that cap is not coming off. Now on engines that may have clearance issues on the timing cover or uh, more specifically for engines that are in a V-drive configuration where the engine is oriented in a 180 degree configuration. Sometimes it's necessary not to come off the timing cover of the engine, but rather off of one of the valve covers. Again, in a particular case like a V-drive, we want to be on the opposite side of the engine that's receiving uh, the area of the oil pan that may have more oil because of a bow high configuration. In this particular case, it wouldn't be the number one, it would be the number six. Therefore, we would take the valve cover from number one, we would take this valve cover and swap it for number six. 
and it would be as simple as installing the same sort of tube like we have in the breather configuration and we would install it in the valve cover that has the oil fill. Okay, this would be in installed like so. 90 degree nipple will be mounted to the top of the monument. The hose will be run down, also running down alongside the engine in line. So you have a hose in from here, the hose will be coming out and will also run down to the low point where our puke bottle is at the lowest point of the system. You may have a deck or something right above the engines, a lot of boats like that. In that particular circumstance, we're not able to use a monument and get up high. We're going to have to use the fill cover adaption as such. So it's basically a fill cover cap adapted with a 90 degree hose barb that allows you to stay within the clearance that's no higher than the existing expansion tank and radiator cap. In this particular case, you'll come right out of the fill, you'll run a hose down, integrate the breather in line, and again, run the hose all the way down to the puke bottle, which is the lowest point of the system. So Seaboard also has a kit for the QSB 5.9. Now the QSB 5.9 is oriented and configured basically completely different from a mechanical 6BTA or 6CTA, which we also sell kits for. So the installation fundamentals are basically the same, but the ports we tap into are a little bit different. Again, the crankcase ventilation port on a QSB you'll find on the valve cover uh, towards the turbo side of the engine. And you'll notice that the valve cover port is right here. Now, if, if your engine has a factory walker air sup, you'll already have a provision here that you'll need to remove and replace with what's provided in the kit. What we have in the kit is a CNC'd piece of aluminum fitting that you'll want to apply grease and lightly tap in with a rubber mallet. We're going to run this hose all the way straight down behind the after cooler and to the low point of the engine. We want the puke bottle to sit somewhere down here near the oil pan. Our closed crankcase ventilation system is now complete and we're ready to have a low maintenance, simple, cost effective, easy to maintain system that's going to keep our engine room clean and our engine happy.